Hello there, my fellow Notebook aficionados. This sleek looking fella right here in front of me is the all new Asus ZenBook S16. And it's not only a complete redesign from what we have seen from the company's premium everyday notebook lineup so far, but it is also the first notebook in the studio being powered by AMD's new Strixpoint CPUs. So let us see if the new silicon can keep up with Intel's Meteor Lake lineup and Qualcomm's latest Windows on ARM CPUs and if the ZenBook as a whole can deliver for all of your surfing, binge watching and maybe even gaming needs. Again, the ZenBook is the first notebook hitting the market with Team Red's Strixpoint CPUs. And in general, it seems like ASUS snagged almost all available silicon, then stays in three different notebooks all running the new chips, while you will hardly find them in any other manufacturer as of today. So in addition to the video you are watching right now, we are also working on separate reviews for the ProArt PX13 and P16 and an in-depth analysis that should follow within the next few days. I will link it somewhere up here and in the video description, just in case you want to dive deeper into what makes the new CPU special. Our ZenBook comes with the faster variant of AMD's new Zen 5 mobile family. If you want to call it that, since we are basically talking about two CPUs for now. The Ryzen 9 HX370 is at its core a 12 core CPU and runs at a maximum of 33 watts in this super slim chassis. The GPU side also gets an update with the RDNA 3.5 powered 890M. And given how competitive even the older 780M has been over the past year, it is going to be very interesting to see how the new chip fares in everyday use and gaming. Alongside the core components, we get a 1TB SSD, 32GB of fast LP DDR5X memory and a 2.8K 120Hz OLED. When it comes to its exterior, the S16 is a complete redesign and basically blends the general shape of the last gen ZenBooks with some design cues and features of the Sephiroth lineup. Material quality is simply amazing and the large integrated touchpad, white keys and exhausts above the keyboard look extremely classy. And when you pick this one up, it is hard to believe that they have been able to fit a whole computer in here. And despite the fin design, there's almost no flex or gift for the base unit. The display lid is covered in what ASUS called Seraluminum, a special coating that aims to keep fingerprints at bay. It does this up to a certain point and it looks and feels the part while doing so. The hinges are overall well adjusted and keep the display in place with only minimal wobble. But we also noticed some very minor creaking noises which would not be a deal breaker for me but it might be something that bothers you. Weight is very alright, given the premium construction and large glass covered OLED. It's also well in line with the competition and should hardly weigh you down too much when you are out and about. Most manufacturers use a slim chassis as an excuse to limit port selection, but not so as Zeus. And the ZenBook comes with a very robust I.O. selection that easily puts even much bigger devices to shame. On the left you get a pair of USB-C 4.0s, one of which you would have to sacrifice for charging, and an HDMI 2.1. They even made room for a full-size USB-A and a SD card reader on the right with way above average transfer rates. Wireless transfers are almost the fastest we have ever tested and for the occasional zoom call you get an alright image from the ZenBox webcam, which is definitely a missed opportunity given the otherwise very premium experience. When it comes to maintenance, you definitely have to bite the bullet for this super slim chassis. And while you can easily upgrade to a bigger NVMe drive, that is basically all you can do inside of the S16. On the other hand, you get a pretty amazing keyboard with quite a bit of travel given the sleek appearance and a very satisfying pressure point. The larger keys do rattle a little bit and for some of you the layout might take some getting used to. The large trackpad worked very well during our testing and comes with a few extra features, such as changing system volume and display brightness when sliding along the left and right edges. When it comes to displays, especially OLEDs, ASUS has been killing it so far with their 2024 lineup and the ZenBook is absolutely no exception. The snappy 120Hz panel might not hit mini LED levels of brightness, quite the contrary to be honest, but pretty much everything else about it is as good as it gets, with supernatural color rendition, those inky blacks and great contrast. And speaking about color with Delta E's way below one, you will have a tough time finding a more accurate display on the market right now. Add in the additional and also very accurate color profiles and the ZenBook turns into a very sleek workstation, for example for photographers or graphic designers. 
And if you do want to enjoy a game after work, typical OLED response times and a great HDR experience will give you a good time for that as well. But since we are also talking about self-emitting pixels here, PWM is still a thing with a relatively high frequency of 480Hz. But let's finally talk about performance. The ZenBook can be yours with both new mobiles and 5 chips, the lower-end Ryzen 9 365 with 10 cores and the RX 880M, or, like in our sample, the already mentioned 12-core Ryzen 9 370. In both cases, or well, in almost all notebooks that have been announced so far, system memory is always soldered, so keep that in mind if you rather have the option to add more RAM later on. As I have already mentioned, the new silicon can consume up to 33 watts in the ZenBook, at least in the higher performance modes. However, it does level out at 28 watts in the S16 standard mode, which we also used in our testing. Opting for performance or turbo might give you better results during longer loads, but the difference is only marginal and the 16 ninja gets a lot louder. To give you an impression about what the silicon can do with more power, I also added our early results of the PX13 to our comparisons. Please make sure to subscribe so you won't miss our full review about this super small 13 inch powerhouse or our analysis which will follow quite soon. But enough talk, how does Team Red's new CPU perform? Well, in our CPU rating, a selection of various tests, both single and multi-core, we are actually quite impressed. Comparing the Ryzen to notebooks in a similar form factor and considering that we talk about a 28 watts power level, the ZenBook is very, very well positioned against the competition, whereas the PX13 is quite a bit ahead of everything. In pure multi-core loads, the S16 is sitting pretty right in the middle of everything, but it seems like the new silicon scales very well with more power, as shown by our very impressive results from the PX13 once more. And in single-core loads, AMD shows the competition where it's at, and these are overall very promising results for the new mobile lineup. Especially considering that the new Ryzen in the S16 can beat its predecessor with even lower power draw, and can almost keep up with the Intel competition that runs on double or even three times the wattage. But how about those new Qualcomm chips you might ask? Well, in Cinebench 24, the X1E 8100 can manage to stay on top during single core tests, but its 12 cores are no match for AMD's variants in multi core loads. System performance paints a similar picture with a small but noticeable lead for the ZenBook, and even subjectively, the S16 is a strong contender for the best everyday notebook crown with a fast SSD and more than enough performance for almost anything you do with a notebook on a daily basis. On the GPU side of things, our first impressions from our synthetic tests are rather disappointing of sorts. Since it can only close the gap to Intel's Arc 8, you can find in the higher end Meteor Lake CPUs. Compared to the last gen 780M, the performance gain is much more significant, but we are talking evolution and definitely not revolution here. That said, it will be very interesting how well the GPU part of the silicon scales with higher power limits, which is something we will test once again with the PX13. But of course, synthetic tests do just tell a part of the story, and when looking at actual frame rates, the 890M performs better, even though it is once more not a night and day difference. Again, the PX13 with its higher power limits shows what you can expect in a more ideal scenario. But the ZenBook is of course also not really a full-fledged gaming notebook, so I would say it's a nice benefit that you can indeed play games rather well in 1080p and somewhere between medium to high settings, unless we are talking really demanding AAA titles. As I have already mentioned, you can marginally improve performance when opting for the faster power profiles at the expense of much louder fans. To give you guys a more subjective impression, I recorded some noise samples and as always we are also doing a little bit of a speaker comparison. And the ZenBook actually sounds not too shabby given the thin chassis. If you are after more in-depth info about this one, please feel free to check out our written article as well. We have a lot more data about the S16 for you on our website.
Battery life is pretty okay, given that we are talking about an OLED equipped notebook here, even though the Zenbook will also not really break any endurance records. But a little more over 10.5 hours should get you quite far away from the wall. The S16 is also the perfect companion for your next Netflix marathon with your SO or some friends with a pretty impressive 20 hours in our video playback test. Alright folks, it's already about time to wrap it up. Again, we will do a lot more testing and more in-depth comparisons to put AMD's new silicon into perspective with what else is available in mid-2024 when it comes to mobile CPUs. But given that we are dealing with a very power limited variant of Team Red's latest Ryzen 9 in the Zenbook, we are actually quite impressed so far. The S16 is a very well made and also very versatile notebook with great inputs, a gorgeous display, plenty of I.O. and top notch build quality. And with the help of the new Strixpoint CPUs, it's also fast enough for almost anything you can think of while still offering plenty of battery life and maintaining a pretty quiet noise profile. But as always, let me know what you think about this one and if AMD's new silicon met your expectations so far. Sound off in the comments below. This should be it from my end today. Thanks a ton for watching and do me a favor to hit that like and sub button on your way out. My name is Alex, you've been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.